Okay, lesson 25 continues the story of the Argentine recovery, and it's an article called 500 Plus Time Truecking Let's Found in Argentina, which I published in January 2002. November 19th, 2001, University of Leeds in England, The Reporter, <coughs> issue 473. Common Currencies for Social Change from Buenos Aires to Chapel Allerton. Money makes the world go round. We may not like it, but there's no getting away from it, or is there? By using money simply as a means of exchange, it becomes separated from the idea of wealth and can be used to alleviate poverty and strengthen communities. Development Studies Professor Ruth Pearson has been looking at barter systems using alternative currencies in Buenos Aires and is now introducing a similar system in a very different context, Chapel Allerton, North Leeds. <clears throat> Professor Ruth Pearson was invited to Argentina with a film team from the Open University to see the country's global exchange network firsthand. Although alternative currency schemes operate with different degrees of success elsewhere in both the northern and southern hemispheres, Argentina is the only country where the network has taken off to such an extent that it now boasts nearly a quarter of a million members and has an estimated turnover of a billion. <clears throat> Professor Pearson explains why the system has proved so popular. Argentina was one of the wealthiest countries in South America with an established professional class. However, severe economic problems and the decimation of the welfare state have left many people unemployed and outside the mainstream economy with no means of support. The barter network offered survival and so has quickly spread through the country. No one's ever put it so well before. In Australia, Canada, USA, it's called a lifeboat, even though everyone there really doesn't think their life is really at risk, yet. In countries with no social safety net where lives are really at risk, the Let's Lifeboats do offer real survival. The best example is from Edgar Kahn's first Time Dollar book, where he mentions the nuns in El Paso, Texas, who set up for their poor new mothers uh, a time bank so they could pay poor old mothers to show them how to take care of their new babies and child mortality as expected from a survival lifeboat went down my all-time favorite success story quote back to the article set up originally by sustainable development activists as a neighborhood barter club the network now covers 15 of the 23 provinces and is made up of 500 federated exchange systems each region or province can print its own currency in buenos aires are called creditos each local group, or nodo, holds its own weekly market. From time to time, they come together in larger regional markets. The Buenos Aires market is pictured left. <clears throat> so many of, I'm saying now, many of their Argentinian state governments also print their own currencies. And as long as the private interest-free credito systems support public interest-free government credito systems, they'll both eventually pull through. It's only a matter of time until the time to records accept government creditos and the government accept time to records creditos back. All the fiasco we now see on TV has to do with the failing federal interest bearing one over S minus I system, which can only help the succeeding provincial and private interest free one over S systems that are thriving. And yet, other than my posts, all the world ever hears about Argentina is the collapse of the federal currency economy. One over S, interest-free, time-tracking economy booming in Argentina. One over S minus I, interest-bearing, time-enslaving economy going bust. With 500 towns covered in 15 provinces, what are the odds that I'd have to pay cash for accommodations if I ever visited? You think they'd take an IOU for a night back in Canada like they did all over Europe? When I visited 11 countries in Europe over 40 days, I only had to pay for a hotel one night, paying for 39 nights in 22 towns with time tracking Lex uh, for hours delivered by email at the end of my trip at a rate of five hours per night for a private room. I would venture that anyone going to Argentina might be wise to join their local Let's and try to avoid the one over S minus I federal currency economy. Who knows when the hotel room might jump from 100 pesos to 1,000 pesos while you're in the sauna. But your hours earned in your hometown will always be worth the hours earned in any Argentinian hometown. So, 
article again. Anyone can join a nodo so long as they attend two meetings to learn about the system and agree to abide by trading rules. People set their own prices and the currency is not for accumulation, but purely for trade. New members are given 50 creditos, equivalent to around 50 bucks to begin trading. So I wrote, too bad about their currency not being available for accumulation. It could act as exchange function and savings function too. There's no reason poker chips can't be saved, right? As long as I'm bringing them to the cashier. There's no reason to ban accumulation of savings with creditos. And it's a nice touch giving everyone a certain grant of credits, like in Ithaca, rather than borrowing those sums into existence. This practice has sometimes been condemned, but once again, this demonstrates that as long as the conditions are the same for everyone, whether everyone takes out an initial 50 credits, like Monopoly money, or everyone borrows out an initial 50 credits, like at a time bank, makes no difference. But why have people start in debt when they can all start in credit if it doesn't matter? Better PR. The article. The idea is very simple, but it's proved a lifeline to hundreds of thousands of Argentinians. The markets are full of stalls selling food and consumables, but there are also lawyers, dentists, hairdressers, even masseurs, some of whom come in solidarity, but many who would otherwise find no means of marketing their services. The system has even gained official support, as Professor Pearson explains, quote, In many countries, the governments perceive alternative currencies as a threat. Yeah, and some. However, in Argentina, the government is realizing that the network can keep many people above starvation net level and provide a stepping stone back to the mainstream economy. And that's why in the United States, time bank earnings are not knocked off your welfare money because several states pushed the government, the IRS, and said, look, it, if he's going to do something to help her and her help him back, they're not going to be bugging us to do it for them. So don't take their tax, don't tax them or take their money away. Isn't that neat? That's why. If they're helping themselves, don't stop them. They're not going to bug us, the government, to do it. So not many countries have the government treated let's time trekking as a threat. Only in France and Thailand, as far as I knew. And New Zealand, Australia, United States, Canada, Britain, European parliaments have all supported local currencies with grants and exemptions from federal currency welfare regulations. These parliaments have never just have just never contemplated using the same local software to run their national currencies in the same way and seem satisfied with the current banking system software that keeps breaking down, let alone considering an international UN-managed global time token system. Back to the article. The government is providing technical support to help new businesses uh, that's to be set up by people currently only able to function within the networks. And also some local government taxes can be paid with creditos. Yes! Other mainstream businesses help out by donating unused stocks of food or by accepting creditos as part payment. Yes! Even Buenos Aires taxi drivers can sometimes be paid with creditos. So the big breakthrough, I say, the moment government taxes can be paid with creditos, they become acceptable to the population as a whole. What government, though? I've heard of the odd council that accepts let's money for minor things, but never for taxes. The all-time best stimulus to local currency activity. Back to the article. But Professor Pearson's interest isn't just academic. She believes it's important to get involved on a practical level, and for this reason got in touch with a community group in Leeds to see if they'd be interested in starting a similar system here. Community Action Link in Chapel Allerton held its first barter market earlier this month. In Argentina, the system is about alleviating poverty and giving people a way to gain values from their skills or goods, acting as a safety net because there's no welfare provision. Although there's poverty in Leeds as well, the system of benefits and entitlement means that the unemployed can't easily participate without losing their entitlements. Instead, the network is about creating a sense of community and solidarity, about looking at different ways that money can function and about recycling rather than just throwing it away. So I wrote, that's too bad that they can't easily participate in leads because they get government money. I thought that the British government was making it easier for people to join their local Agenda 21. Let's not harder. Then again, the government often does the opposite of its stated pretext of intent, but it's a problem with the government, not the system. Again, let's time currency is proven to be the only method existing in the world of alleviating poverty and acting as a safety net. There is only one anti-poverty system in the world, and that's the one that ends poverty, not any that alleviate it. The only way to end poverty is to end the lack of money. 
Usury causes lack of money by demanding the return for 11 for 10. Automatic shortage. Ending usury equalizes money and debt for permanent stability. Like adding an 11th chair to musical chairs so everybody's got one. No more failure. But at least any search in the web for anti-poverty brings everyone to the let solution. Why am I the only person in the world trumpeting the good news coming out of Argentina? With people now being shot in the streets over financial considerations, I must once again repeat the good news about how nearer to the solution people in Argentina are than anyone else in the world, but we can get there too.